All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Google Next 2024. I'm super excited to have Guido and Ankur with me from Bears. Uh, very excited to host you both on the Robert Show uh, and chat about the key announcements that were made, about what's happening at Bear and much more. Uh, can you start with a quick introduction about what you're working on and uh, just a little about yourself? Maybe Guido? Thanks, Ravi. So I'm Guido. I'm based in Berlin, Germany, um, part of Bayer's radiology function and heading a, a team that's taking care for imaging, medical imaging, nice. uh, data uh, and AI research. So we are a center of excellence and looking into many things. Fantastic. And here's Ankur? my colleague, Ankur. Yeah. So, Ravit, nice to meet you. Um, Thank you. I'm Ankur Sharma. I'm the head of medical affairs for digital radiology at Bayer. Um, I'm based in Pittsburgh in the US. and. We're working on algorithms and how we can develop and deploy tools that help impact patient care and radiologists and doctors and how they deliver that care. Wow. So I think it's going to be a fascinating discussion here. Yeah, for sure. Like it's a good mix of tech plus medical and which is very important. Uh, so I'm excited to chat with both of you. But just uh, since we are here and day one, we've had like such great announcements. I was at the keynote listening to Thomas Kurian and the team and uh, it was it was such great, uh, you know, advancements that they've made in just eight months. So, uh, you know, during Next, it's always exciting to attend Next. Uh, but what are your key takeaways? How do you look at it? Uh, do you want to share anything particular that you're excited about? You know? Yes, first of all, we are very excited that we have announced also today here in Las Vegas a new innovation platform mm -hmm. that we uh, co-create together with Google yeah. the Cloud. Uh, it's about revolutionizing healthcare development. Nice. So it's, it's a really big topic for us, um, where we use the uh, Gen AI suite of Google um, to produce scalable environment mm -hmm. for uh, digital uh, application development, in particular for radiology. Very nice. Ankur, anything that you would like to share? Yeah, I think there are a few things that were interesting to me from the keynote itself. Yes. I think from the keynote itself, the aspects of GCP and the way that they're looking at security and regulated um, outcomes, these are two very important things in the healthcare field, right? Mm -hmm. there, we're a regulated space and security and patient privacy is very important. So the fact that GCP is looking at how to address those needs is important for our space. Additionally, super excited about our announcement with Google. Right? Yes. This is, this is the, I think, honestly, the showstopper for us. Uh, to exactly. be selfish. <laughs> uh, but in that, I think exactly what Guido said. The, the announcements behind their new TPU structure, their architecture for development of AI, and how that relates to what we want to do in healthcare and generate AI that can be used to further patient care, and how we're doing that approach from our joint platform, all goes hand in hand is going to be super exciting. Mm, very exciting. And uh, thanks for those insights. Also, quickly, uh, you know, I wanted to. I know AI is the talk of the town, uh, but at the same time, when we are talking about medical and healthcare, AI is so critical as well. Like you need to be very sure about when you're implementing AI. So, what are some of the challenges that you see when implementing AI in the, uh, you know, in the healthcare system? And but at the same time, what? How do you see it advancing very quickly when you actually get those challenges through? Uncle, you first. Uh, so I think, you know, it's a great question, and there's a couple of things. One is the digitization of healthcare, mm. right? Uh, healthcare is not all digitized. Right. So piece one is the digitization. Uh, radiology is a great place for that because imaging is digital, There, so it's easy to have AI there. The second piece that was important in that is that... Um, when we talk about delivering this and having the data behind it, AI has to be understood. You can't just do whatever you want. So True. we actually have to teach physicians what it means to have the AI and how to interpret the outputs of the AI. Exactly. So that yeah. it's used as a powerful tool that it is, as opposed to creating conflict and challenges in patient care. Mm. So there is that aspect. And then the last piece of it that I think a lot of people forget about is uh, how AI can help enhance the patient side of it because doctors talk to doctors in their own language. Yes. Doctors talk to pharmacists in a different language. Exactly. Specialists have their own language. 
it's very hard sometimes for the patient to understand what it's doing and what that means, how that translates. And developing AI that can use LLM, large language models that can then translate doctor speak mm -hmm. from all this information that we have right. to, hey, what does this mean for you as the patient? This is another piece of the powerful side of the journey. And yeah, I mean, we can, with Google, that that's something we can enable that. That's awesome. You know? Yeah. Um, building on what Angkor just, just very nicely explained, um, it's also looking in particular into radiology. Uh, mm -hmm. Medical imaging is the richest clinical data uh, modality that we have. Right. Um, there are so many things so far that are untapped in that area where we think with the promise of AI to go there. Mm. Uh, also in radiology, we see a shortage of stuff, trained stuff uh, across the globe. Um, we have an increasing volume of medical imaging, right. an increasing volume of chronic diseases. So we need to have tools that help to deal with this big volume of, of workload. Exactly. And that's what we try with, with our collaboration here also with Google to bring to the table and then to close here that, that, that comment. At the end of the day, the radiologist um, needs to trust the applications that are developed. So that's our big task uh, as an industry together with regulator, uh, regulator uh, authorities to develop a frame yeah. where we can develop trustful and explainable, understandable AI. So That's awesome. Very Anything that you would like to add? Yeah. I, I think one of the things that you hit the nail on the head there is, is the explainability of AI mm. and the data behind it. The, the kind of the magic of our partnership with Google and the development is this access to all this data behind it to develop these models mm. that then because the data is there and you have the access and you can develop these models and deploy them, you have a train of clarity of explainability. And then when you, do, when you take those models and then you put them in clinical practice and you get real world evidence, you have a way to understand it. It's not a black box, but rather something that can be explained. Wow. And the practice of medicine is evidence-based. So now you have a way to build evidence-backed algorithms in healthcare. Mm. It's a game changer for sure. Yes, yes. Thanks, thanks Guido, thanks Ankur for sharing that. Also quickly, uh, you know, when we talk about AI, it also brings me to an important question. Like things change very quickly in AI. Like every hour there's an announcement that happens. But uh, there are a few things that will go on for long, long term. Uh, and I'm kind of curious about the future as well. What are your future predictions for the space that you are in? Uh, would you like to share something about that? Maybe Guido first? Yeah. Um, future looks bright. Yes. That's, that's our first, first comment here. Good news, yeah. Yeah, that's good news. Um, also, I think it's, it's important to understand future and, and uh, today. So today we still need 10 years mm -hmm. to develop a new drug. Right. So to develop a new uh, digital application is a little bit faster but also looking into uh, how we can accelerate the drug development right. and understanding again the role of medical imaging also for drug development, mm. the role of imaging biomarkers, the role of maybe producing digital twins right. to predict the behavior of a certain molecule in the human body. This is really the big step forward right. where we together with industry and partners like Google experiment first right. um, and massively need to ensure that uh, the accuracy is there. And from that perspective, uh, the latest announcements on technology that we have all learned together today here at uh, uh, Google Next in Las Vegas are one next important step in that direction. Angkor. That's maybe. awesome. I, I think one other piece is where we are now, right? The future pathway, but like I just said, medicine is evidence-based mm. and where, where the pathway is for pharmaceuticals. It takes years to develop, et cetera. When we talk about AI tools, they're medical devices, they're regulated. There is a pathway to them. So they don't evolve as quickly, traditionally. But we have this opportunity because of the transparency, the evidence generation, the clarity that we are building here. Right. We have an ability to generate evidence and get these algorithms out in a way that's able to impact quicker. So you're going to be able to iterate these software as a medical device tools quicker in a better way mm -hmm. so they're able to actually have a better impact. You might release a, an algorithm the first time you build an algorithm. Maybe it's 
it works 20% of the time. Mm. But as you iterate and you fine tune it and you get it to that 80, 90, 95%, wow. yeah. right? That's where you can make impacts. And that requires this transparency of having, having the data sources, having the data sources annotated and correctly identified. It all builds to building these strong algorithms. And that's going to help iterate to change the future of how medicine is done. And that's going to not just be imaging, but also text-based as we get into LLMs and multimodal AI. Yeah, exactly. No, I think uh, it's just like a journey where you have to train, you have to get there, and you have to make sure where you reach a level where it's actually creating an, an impact, for sure. So that's a good one. I know I can chat with both of you for the full day and learn so many more things, but just keeping time in mind, I wanted to quickly ask one last question that is, I'm pretty sure our audience would also love to connect with you. So which is the best place? Is it LinkedIn, email, or any other place where you blog or anything that you would like to share? Guido? So if, for me, it would be LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, you will find my name there very easily or just follow the Bayer Pharmaceuticals uh, page and. Uh, X and LinkedIn, wherever. okay. And for Anko, maybe LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn. Uh, email is buried. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Great, yeah. All right. So you guys can catch up with Anko and Guido at LinkedIn. Thanks again for doing this. It was such a pleasure hosting you both on the Robert Show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.